What will you do if you know your friend secretly likes your man? What's that? What, what? I don't understand the question. Likes my, is my man the only man in the world that you did not see another man to like? Aside from the one that is liking me and I'm liking him back. I don't understand. So if you're sitting down in the house and you're worrying about the witches that your man will meet outside in the main roads, you're now worrying about your man and what your friend could do to get your man. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today's video is going to be a chit chat type get ready with me. I know that you guys love it when I do chit chat get ready with me. The last one was on accents. If you've not seen that video, you're really missing out in your life. You should go watch that video. I'm going to have it linked somewhere here. I asked you guys on Instagram recently to let me know what topic you'd like me to talk about next. Something that I've never talked about on this channel before. I just talked to you guys while I do my makeup and a lot of you kept saying friendship. So I see people who just type friendship, friendship, friendship in the box because I asked this on my stories and I used the question box. So a lot of you were just typing friendship in there. But then I wasn't really sure what you guys wanted me to talk about when it came to friendship. So I asked again on Insta stories. This time around I kind of told you guys to ask more detailed questions because I wasn't really sure what to talk about when it came to this topic. I do have some things that I probably want to say but then I didn't want this to be more of like an advice type of video. I wanted to just answer your questions while I did my makeup. So this is going to be the first Q&A type chit chat get ready with me that I've ever done here. I feel like it's really important that I let you guys know at this point that I'm really enjoying my hair. I reviewed this hair before. I did an entire get ready with me with this hair. A couple of months back, the hair is from RPG Show. I'm going to have a link to it for it in the description box. So I'm going to start out by priming. This is the Flory Roberts Shine Away Oil Blotting Primer. Looks like this. I've used it before on Instagram. Funny enough, I haven't used it on here. I was like, Dima, what are you doing? I really like this primer because it reminds me a lot of Black Ops Mattifying Primer. There was a time I used to use Black Ops, like seriously. This primer reminds me of that primer from them. It doesn't dry the skin out. It has a very liquidy texture, consistency. It just kind of gives your face a very soft matte finish and just helps control oil throughout the day. But then looking at it at first or maybe putting it on your hand at first, you would never think that this is something that would control oil. But then it doesn't dry the skin out. You guys know that by now that when it comes to my primers, this is what I like, okay? Primers that don't dry the skin out. It has an obvious scent to it. So I don't mind that. You guys know by this time. You guys know by this point that my nose is something Thing I'd call abroka, okay? Like a lot of scents don't irritate me. It takes a lot for me to dislike a scent when it comes to perfumes. I tend to stay away from things that are fruity, but then if they smell very mature or floral, I don't have a problem and that's what this smells like. Guys, so I have the questions here. You guys can see that I have quite a few questions here. I'll probably not be able to answer all of them. I love the way that it boxes the questions in and just makes them very neat and you're able to attend to everything one by one as opposed to the comment section where everything is like a market. My Huda Beauty setting powder in Kanufa. So the first question here, I won't be mentioning names, okay? Because I feel like this topic is quite sensitive and I don't want people to hear their friends' names and think, oh, my friend came here to be asking Dimume about me. Okay, so with other Q&As that I tend to do, like I, I always leave the name of whoever it is has asked a particular question. I will not be doing that this time around. I know you guys understand why. So the first question here is, how do I tell my childhood friend to stop making my life successes about her failures? This is actually, <laughs> this is actually a very valid question. I'm not going to act as if this is something that I am used to at this point in my life. I really don't have friends who make it their business to always like counter every positive thing that has happened in my life with something negative. Have I been at points in my life where I was a bit wary sharing good news with people who I called my friends because I was a bit worried as to just how they would react, maybe because they were going through something at the time, yes. But then where I'm at in my life right now, I am so grateful and thankful because because 
This past couple of years, I've made a conscious effort to really let go of people that I'm not comfortable around. If I'm not comfortable around, if I'm not comfortable about the things you say to me, if I'm not comfortable about how you react, if I'm not comfortable about the things that just pop out of your mouth once in a while, I just like, see me, I'm, I can do distance very well. Sometime last year, I did have something. I think I had had a couple of big wins. I think at that time it had something to do with maybe features on TV or magazine or I don't know what it was or did I go for any brand? Yes, last year I knew that I did go for a brand trip with a brand to the UK. It was around one of those. I really can't pinpoint what it was exactly. And I remember like I was so happy and I had come on Instagram and I had shared this thing. And this person who I know is not like somebody that I know from Instagram. I knew her maybe not too well, but then I'd easily call her my friend at a point in my life. Replied the story and she was like, oh, she doesn't understand how I am getting all this acknowledgement and I'm doing really well and I'm working with all these people and nothing is really happening for her and she's not growing or something. I'm not saying this word for word. And you know, honestly, I don't want to go on Instagram and just go and start looking for the message. It's pointless. But what she told me, I'm not saying you word for word. It was along these lines. It was along the lines of how come you're winning this much and then nothing is really happening for me that she doesn't really understand it. It wasn't a congratulations. It wasn't an I am happy for you. I remember showing Noma that particular comment and Noma was just like, mm -hmm. when Noma says, mm -hmm, okay it means so many things please if you're someone who tends to do this it doesn't make sense especially when someone is celebrating something when they are winning at something that is not the time to bring out or bring up whatever it is you're going through if this person is truly your friend and me i know what my friends are to me if this person was really your friend she's also praying for you to win she will be happy for you when you win the only way that i'd answer that question is to just don't say anything I didn't reply the message. I didn't reply. What was I supposed to tell you? One thing I have learned from life and living life in general at this point, at this age, is that people in life, right, they tend to struggle when it comes to accepting success or if you're doing just way better than them in your chosen career, I would say career work or just like just when it comes to life, especially if they were friends with you or you were very close to them or you knew them or they knew you really well at a point in your life where this person considered you to be her equal, especially sometimes knowing that you both had the same starting point, some people just don't handle it well. Guys, I had to fill the other brows quickly off camera because brows tend to take a lot of time and they require a lot of attention. I'm going to define my brows real quick. I have a detailed video on this. If you want a detailed eyebrow routine video, please go watch that video. I just want to move past this so that I can talk to you guys comfortably. Okay, so done most of it off camera. And with this particular question that I answered, I feel like it's extremely important that I also say that this does not mean that you go around trying to read meaning into your friends' behaviors. Maybe if they are reserved or they kind of put back. Life happens to so many people on levels that you cannot begin to understand. And if someone, if you really love someone and you've noticed that they've kind of just moved back, maybe try talking to them. But then in situations where every time you're vocal about a win or something that you're really happy about and another person very vocally tries to counter it or in the same conversation, bring up an issue that she deems is a lot more important than this your win, then you have to really reassess the dynamics that you have with this person because it doesn't sound like what a friend should be doing it's not so going to prime my eyelids with my mac prep and prime primer okay so the next question here is do you believe in cancelling fake friends or friends that lie absolutely when you know that somebody's fake or when you know that they constantly lie to you i don't really know why you're stressing yourself okay like i honestly don't know my peace is such an important thing to me guys i'm not joking i'm at a point in my life where my peace my mental health they are very very important to me right now and from experience friends who constantly lie and who, like are fake on top the probability that they will be the kind of people who gaslight you also very high like i don't see the reason why you shouldn't cancel them so we're going to apply some of that setting powder over the primer 
In this video, I want to recreate a look that some of you actually requested that I do. If you've seen my top five pink lipsticks for women of color video, it's the look that I had on there. And also the video that I did where I kind of talked about slash shared why I stopped doing makeup professionally. It's the same makeup that I had on in the two videos. A lot of you have requested that I just share how I achieved that look and that's what I'm going to be doing. So for that look, I know that I use this eyeshadow palette from NYX and this is their NYX. This is the NYX Lead Lingerie Palette and on the back of it, it says LLSP01, just in case this Lead Lingerie comes in different shades because I can't see right now if I have a particular type of Lead Lingerie Palette. So that's the reason why I gave you guys the code. But I am going to leave the list of everything that I've used in this video in the description box. So I'm going to go in with this shade here. So the next question is how large slash small is your friendship circle, guys? My circle is actually not that big. I have good friends at this point in my life. I've made some really good ones, especially over the past year, but then I don't have a very big circle of friends. And when you say circle, I always imagine like very like, you know the type of friendships you see or you read about or you see on social media where everybody kind of knows each other. I do actually have a good amount of friends right now, but then my friends are not necessarily people who know each other. Okay, so when you say circle, I always like imagine a group of people who kind of know each other and are kind of going to maybe during a wedding now on each other's bridal trains or something like that. No, not really. I have very good friends now, but they don't necessarily know each other. So I don't consider them like a circle okay so putting this color on both my crease and transition area i'm doing the look that i had on in those two videos but i do want i want to do it with a twist so i'm going to add something like a very bright color to my teardrop area i think i want to we will see the next one here is is there a thing as a best friend so one of you asked if there is a thing as a best friend yes i do think that there is a thing like a best friend i've had quite a few of those when it comes to friendship and just like emotional like attachment involvement and everything like me i'm very very cautious and tend to be a bit reserved especially at the beginning of things like this because i know myself like if i consider you a friend literally i go into my heart and i create an entire room for you i create space for you there and i love the shit excuse my language out of you it's just even recently that i've just tried just thinking about how i've done friendships for as long as i can remember and i started seeing that there is a pattern you know primary school i had one best friend secondary school i had one best friend the period between secondary school and uni i had one best friend and some of them might be people that i have known for a very long period of time but then during these periods that i'm mentioning i became extremely close to them and labeled them best friend so uni i had one best friend youth service i had one best friend when i was doing my Masters, I had someone that I had considered my best friend at the time. So that's how I am. And then the reason why it's a bit like I've just never been one. I don't know how to do friendship in groups. Like I just, I don't know. It's not something that has ever come easy to me. And then after my masters and after that i've gone on to make some other friends but then the reason why i feel like i i tend to handle people in small doses like this is because when i love people like i said i make a space for them in my heart and i tend to excuse everything like i'm the type of person who up until even last year like i wouldn't let people go because of things that they did and i wouldn't call out certain behavior i'm hardly ever confrontational that i even ever open my mouth and say that you've done something know that that thing has hurt me so much or that it built up to a level where i just couldn't hold it in anymore but normally like i love my friends so much that i keep i can make excuses for them i am never one to do something now and the first thing i do is come and start asking you oh why didn't you do this for me my automatic reaction to when somebody maybe does not do something that i expected them to do is to try to rationalize their behavior to try to understand them and especially from a point of view that comes from love okay why did they not do this maybe they were going through this and then i go through this whole period of rationalizing it and before you know it i've let it go and I used to, I don't know, like I thought it used to be the best thing to do because if you love somebody ideally, you shouldn't want to punish them or make them feel uncomfortable. It has actually taught me in recent times that that gives certain types of people the opportunity to do things because they are the ones who are usually calling out and you never call out. And the things that they call out are so minor compared to the things that you decided to let go. Some of them actually in their minds never believe that they've done anything wrong because you've never called them out. Does any of this make sense? 
Okay. There's a question here that was asked in three different boxes. If your friend says something offensive to you but refuses to see it as such, do you tell her she owes you an apology? Or does she have to come to a point where she realizes she was wrong and apologizes? Or do you just move on with the friendship and act like nothing happened? Like I just explained to you guys, I am that person who will move on with the friendship and act like nothing happened. I am basically that person. But then a lot of people can be so oblivious to the very insensitive, toxic things that they do. And because you're not somebody who calls them out for it or on them or these things that they do, they in their minds, but I think that to a large extent some of them know but like to pretend that they don't know because as long as you don't call them out, maybe they think in their mind, oh, they could get away. Some people are like that. Some people will keep pushing to see what they can get away with. And if they constantly push or do things that are very insensitive to you and you don't really get to points where you call it out or say it out or you're like, you've, you've really offended me. It's one, it's either that they, they don't think that they are doing anything which is the case in some cases but then in some cases it could also be that yeah they know that they can do it to you and get away with it so they will just keep doing it okay i'm going to try really hard to not generalize anything in this video and try to personalize most of the things that i'm going to say but at where i am in my life right now if someone does something hurtful to me i am no longer at that place in my life where I think that I can love someone out of bad behavior. This was me even up until late last year. I rationalize what you've done, I make excuses for you, I carry on like nothing happened. And if you're someone who is looking for change, these people are probably not going to change you know some of them do know what they are doing but if they feel like they can get away with treating you like shit then they will constantly get away with treating you like shit and it's so funny because you will even hear them say to you sometimes that oh you hold more value than this person does to me you are this person to me you know like i know like where like these people are my friends but i know that like they are not what you are to me but they know that irrespective of the fact that they cannot even count on these other people as much as they can count on you because I had something like this exactly in my life. They know that irrespective of the fact that this other person or these other people aren't even people that they can call to talk about certain things, but they also know that there are consequences if they exclude those people from certain things. Those people are the kind of people that will not take anything, so they will call them out. You will be shocked that I found myself in situations where those other people were included but I wasn't included in things. Does that make sense? Because I think that this person knew that low key, she could get away with not including me or anything. Oh, is it not her? Is it not Dima? You know? So I'm going to cut my crease now and I'll be using my P. Louise base in number four. It looks like this. I'm going to cut my crease re really high, like not too high, but way past my actual lid space. So. Guys, I can't really talk too much while doing this, so let me just finish with this. So I'm going to apply this particular shade here all over my lid space. Okay, so the next question here is, what will you do if you know your friend secretly likes your man? What's that? What, what? I don't understand the question. Likes my, is my man the only man in the world that he did not see another man to like? Aside from the one that is liking me and I'm liking him back. I don't understand. This is not a novel. Use your sense, you know? And it's very dangerous as well. Because I don't really know. Because I want to assume that you're talking about like serious like and you know that if this person has any given opportunity, the person will jump your man's bones. I don't understand. So if you're sitting down in the house and you're worrying about the witches that your man will meet outside in the main roads. You're now worrying about your man and what your friend could do to get your man. Like, it doesn't just make sense. Like, there are things that you can worry about, like, when it comes to strangers that you don't know. Not your friend who is your friend who is supposed to be loyal to you. Like, I just don't understand where to even start with this type of question. Because I know that things like this do happen in real life, but that person is not your friend. Like, like I don't understand. Like, if we're talking egg, like, see... See, excuse me, please, that, that person, there's something really wrong there, please. I'm going in with a smaller brush and I'm just getting into all the tight corners. I want to make sure that my, the line that I have for my cut crease is very sharp. So I think that the primary eyeshadow that I need on my lid space is on right now. The next one is how open are you with friends? Oh my God, with my really close friends now, I'm really open. I don't keep anything 
away from them most of the times. Like they know me really well at this point in time. I'm going to go in with this shade here next, okay? I'm just going to try to use this color that I've just shown you guys to blend out this edge here. I'm going to use a darker color still, but I'm not going for anything dramatic. The thing I like about this look is the fact that it involves a cut crease, but it's soft. It's not harsh or dark. There's a question here saying, from your vlogs, you don't seem to have that many friends. Why is that? Guys, somebody must not have that many friends. Even if you have only one or two friends in this your life, you're okay. But that's actually not the case for me. The truth is that you guys have actually never seen 95% of my friends. They are very private people. And because I didn't grow up in Lagos, you know, I didn't grow up in Lagos at all. I moved to Lagos about three years ago. Some of my friends that I made when I was a lot younger, who I'm still very close with, they're not here. So the probability that you see them in my everyday type of vlogs here in Lagos, very low. And if you're expecting me to pop up here one day with a party of friends, it's not gonna happen. Um, do you love having friends over like for a week or so? Or do you prefer to be home and work alone? I, I love both, okay? Normally I'm an introvert and I love my space and all of that but then I get really excited when I have friends and family come over. You guys have seen that. I get really excited when friends and family come over. You know, I love it when I spend time with them. We do that for a while and everybody kind of goes back to their own life. I love that. But then again, I also love, like I love both like I said, okay? I already answered this question. I want to take this color a little bit into this edge here. Okay, so the next one is being the single friend. I'm sure that this question doesn't have anything to do with actually being single in the real sense of being single. It probably means uh, not being married, if I understand this question from a Nigerian point of view. From some of the videos that I have done here, yeah, you know that I'm really not friends with people who don't think a certain way, period. So I make it my business to be friends with people who think a certain way, okay? That's number one. Number two is that like, one of my very good friends, like, I've been friends with for such a long time, is married, you know, she doesn't live here, she lives in Abuja. I think she has come out my vlog once. One of my very, very, very good friends, like, I'm, I'm talking about her, I'm touching my chest, because she has an entire room filled with good stuff in my heart. Um, she lives in Abuja. She has, like, two kids, and we know the kind of things we talk about. Like, we've been having this conversation recently, because we had heard someone say that, when women come together that all they talk about is men and we are laughing because we literally talk on a daily basis and we never talk about men sometimes we do okay but then it's not what we talk about in every single conversation so the kind of people i'm friends with this is not an issue i know that it is for some people but it also doesn't make sense i feel like being friends with people who make your relationship status the reason why they treat you a certain way because be careful those people are not really your friends too Okay, so the next question here is what kind of personalities would you naturally gravitate towards? Um, I'm going to go in with this brown here, this darker shade here before I start answering this question. I don't want this area to be too dark. So I'm going to try to blend this out as much as I can just so that I soften it up. I wouldn't say that my friends all have to have a particular type of personality, no. And just thinking about all of them now, they're all so different and I know what to expect from them at certain times. And yet those of them that I know tend to understand certain things a lot better, but like I still love them because I know that they're all genuinely good people. So they don't, I don't know how to explain it, they don't all have one personality and I don't expect all my friends to have a certain type of personality as if it's like a criteria. What I have learned though in the past couple of years is that I really don't want to have anything to do with selfish people in my life again and it's something that I look out for now so closely if someone is selfish I don't want to have anything to do with you and when I'm talking about selfishness I'm not talking about material things I'm not talking about them being able to give me money or something when I really need it or help me out with a physical like something material ideally your friends should be people who you can go run to in situations like this however when I'm talking about selfish now, some of the friendships that I know in the past seven, eight years that have gone sour for me and certain people, the one common denominator is selfishness. Nothing that really concerns you is anything serious to them, you know? It's always about them, 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 and what they are feeling and what do you, you did not do for them when they were feeling a certain way. You also have to be very, very careful of people who make light of certain things that you're going through. Don't want to treat it as anything difficult. Or maybe if it's something that you're constantly going through, something that you're constantly dealing with, it's something that you live with. And maybe because you don't talk about it all the time, 
but they do know what it is they try to act like it's not there it's one of the first things i look out for if you're someone who is constantly constantly pointing out what people have not done for you or they did not do but then you know you're never sensitive to what another person is going through it's a type of selfishness i don't want to have anything to do with that okay so this one says hello dima aside going on lunch dinner dates what other steps do you take to maintain friendships i'm going to take this brighter shade here this one here and i'm going to use this to set my brow bone area okay like i already said a lot of my friends don't even live in lagos some of them live outside of nigeria about two of them that i'm really close to live outside of nigeria now um some of them don't even live here in lagos do you understand and sometimes even the ones that live in lagos they're making out time self for us to go for the dates in one okay it's not that easy but there are so many things you can do it's from calls text them actually if you've not heard from somebody in a while one thing i know that i like to do maybe don't do this too much because maybe when you do it too much it doesn't it there's really nothing special about it anymore but on social media send them things you find funny you know send them like things you've seen on social media and maybe try to discuss it with them via text and be like what do you think you know stuff like that it's always like a way that you people talk but then again it's still like not like deep deep talk how are you how are you? but you guys are talking to get so it's a way to does that make sense that's my favorite way of doing it anyways we share memes a lot we share posts on instagram dms if there's a conversation happening i always share with them and be like oh what do you think about this tell me you know that's a good way moving on okay so how long have you been friends with your oldest friend so my oldest friend that i still have um like i still talk to on a regular basis i've been friends with her since at jess's one in hrc she's one of my oldest friends and jess's one for me was the year 2000 so let me do a quick math 2019 minus two that's like 19 years <laughs> That's 19 years. I've been friends with my closest friend for 19 years. Like, do you know, as I was about to type 2000, I was like, are you stupid? 19 is the only thing there. So guys, I've been friends with my closest friend for 19 years, okay? Almost done with my eyes. I'm going to pop on a pair of lashes. Let me show you guys which one I'll be using. This one here. This is the one I believe I had on in that video. Because I look really closely to make sure that I had the exact one that I used there. And I think it's this one. I'm hoping it is. Okay, so another one here says deal breakers in friendships. Like I said, I just don't like selfish people and it's one of those things that I look out for now because I have just not had good experience with them in general. But then again, yeah, one thing again that I know that I don't like and with people who, all the people I know that I have noticed it with in the beginning, like the relationship hardly ever goes anywhere are people who don't know how to let things go. And like I said, I just told you guys like earlier on that I am all for calling bad behavior out. But then if bad behavior is called out and the person apologizes and the apology is genuine, even if you don't think that the apology is genuine, like I don't like it when people hold on to things that people do. I'm not a big fan of like, if you and someone has some sort of minor altercation and it's something that is behind or a misunderstanding or whatever, and you make it your business to tell every single person you meet about this thing that that person did to you. I have a theory about that because if you make it your conscious effort to go around telling people about somebody when i moved to lagos this happened to me a lot because so many people had different things to say about different people see eh, what you hear about like what people tell you about other people especially when it's negative just know that it is based on whatever happened between the two of them whatever altercation that they had people who go around constantly talking about other people especially to new people who don't really know them that well or who just go around without any reason try to change your impression of someone who has never done anything to you i'm not a big fan of those type of people this is my clinique highlands mascara they're going to have the lashes that I'm going to apply. Another thing again is somebody who keeps telling you negative things or brings the bad gist of somebody that you know that they are close to. That's also a very big red flag. They are on Instagram posting kiss emoji, kissing emoji. I love you, love you, love you. And this person is basically talking about this person in a way that is so different as to what she shows the world on social media be careful okay because it's only a matter of time too before it will land on your own head guys i didn't even know that my camera stopped recording um so i'm going in or i've gone in with this yellow here from the alisa edwards palette and this is in brick road okay
And this particular one says, what do you do when you're in a toxic friendship with a co-worker? Just to elaborate, they take advantage of your friendship to not perform certain duties. Uh, that person is a user. I don't think I have mentioned this yet, but then I also don't like users, period. I've had some very weird experiences with people who are users as well. They come to you asking you for so many things. There was one that shocked me, guys. Let me tell you. It was like a Nollywood something. This person came to me, you know, asking for advice, saying that they wanted me to, you know, like they're struggling, like that they wanted me to help them, give them advice, blah, 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 blah. On something that I really know how to do. I was like, oh, you don't need to feel like this. Tell me what it is. Like, like I brought out time, you know, took this person in, explained everything, gave the person a proper tutorial, answered all the questions they asked me, okay? Like I didn't have any, like I answered everything. The one time in my life that I needed help and at that point, I didn't think that me and this person was BFF so that we we're very, very close or anything. But you know, she was somebody that, if somebody says, oh, you're friends with this person, I'll not say, ha, she's not my friend. At that point, I had to turn the AC off. Like, is this weird thing I'm having now where it gets too cold and it gets too warm and then it gets too cold and then it gets too warm. But, um, my dear, the one and only time that I needed something that this person was the only person I knew who could answer that. It was just a recommendation, okay? She refused to answer me. She refused to tell me what I was asking her. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's using. Um, if you are in a situation with somebody who just, like, is really in an office environment who knows that, you know, they keep using you for things, taking advantage of the fact that you consider them a friend. It's, it's the same thing that I explained, oh, is it not Dima? Oh, she would do it or she wouldn't make a fuss. She would do it because she would do it if I didn't do it or she would keep quiet about it. This is in an office environment though because this is how I, I, I kind of think it will go. This person wouldn't do what they expect they are supposed to do because they know that oh is it not you you will do it oh you got them covered and when it's your turn they never give the same energy stay away from those people and stop doing whatever it is that they know that you are automatically programmed to do or they know that if they don't do you will do stop picking up their slack let them pick things up for themselves they will learn they might act all offended and shocked at first but they've learned their lesson um i'm going to do my foundation now i already did my primer and use some powder i'm going to move straight into foundation so i'll be using my fenty beauty pro filter foundation in the shade 420 and just with my hand like this i'm going to pick another question to answer okay so next question is have you ever had friends who you found were with you just for what they could gain from you i just explained that guys it happens more often than you think to a lot of people, okay? So people do that a lot. They just try, they try, it's, it's try your luck actually. They try and they just keep trying. And in this particular situation that I had just explained to you guys, it was kind of the same thing. And I didn't even pick on quickly because I was like, oh, maybe she did not see my message. Oh, maybe she did not understand what I asked her. Oh, this is, this is how I used to be guys. I keep rationalizing bad behavior and i'm like oh maybe she didn't see it and after this again this person came back and asked something else oh i, I answered her i told her oh but this one i answer as i asked she didn't answer maybe she was busy maybe she didn't see it maybe maybe i keep maybe it was later on that i realized that this person actually had seen my question that she knew what i was asking her of and she just decided not to share with me or help me out okay so foundation done I'm going to use my Colourpop No Filter Concealer in the shade Dark 46. The next one is, is it okay to cut people off, right? When you think that they are just too toxic for you. Honestly, I would say yes. If someone is... See, mental health is such an important thing. And I feel like a lot of us tend to take it for granted. If you're with somebody who constantly gaslights you, very selfish, looks for who to blame for their own mistakes, doesn't even, like, not sensitive at all, doesn't know what emotional intelligence is, guys, I don't think that there really is any point, you know? Especially if this person is affecting, like, your mental health, you know? 
I've had conversations in recent times with people who one of the things that like drove them straight into depression were people who they considered friends, you know, and the way that they would treat them and them just asking themselves why. And these people constantly gaslighting them, trying to blame them for everything and tell them that their own mistakes are your fault. If someone is toxic and is a danger to your mental health, I would highly advise that you cut this person off. Like, I don't see the reason why you would hold on to somebody like that. So my black opal stick foundation in Carob. Just a little bit. And I'm going to take my blending sponge from Zikel. The next one is, how do you tell the difference between acquaintances, colleagues, and growing friendships? Guys, this is actually a very, very difficult question. And I find that it has been a bit difficult for me to answer sometimes here in Lagos. But then I just say, pay very, 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 very close attention to where people place you in their lives. I'm going to apply some blush. This is um, Anastasia Beverly Hills Blush Trio in Cocktail Party. If you're wondering, the powder that I used to set my contour, it was the Milani Press Powder in Earth Glow, guys. I'm going to take these two colors, kind of swirl my brush into these two. And I'm going to apply this on my cheeks. I'm going to go over my face with some powder. I'm almost done with this look, guys. Trust me, okay? Almost done. And I am going to take this shade here from the palette that I used on my eyes. And I'm going to smudge this on my lower lash line. So I'm going to use a very, very small shading brush and I'm going to apply some of the yellow that I have on my tear duct area on my lower lash line here. I don't have a primer in that area, so I'm hoping that I actually have color payoff because... Okay, I do have... I'm getting some color payoff, so... This eyeshadow palette does really well with a primer, but then if you don't have a primer on, you might struggle a little bit. Or if you don't have something sticky on for the matte colors to adhere to, then you might struggle a little bit. If I had applied the P. Louise base in this area first, this would be doing a lot better than it is now, but I didn't. It looks decent now. It's not extremely bright, like a bright yellow, like I would want it to, but then there's yellow there, and that's all that matters. So I'm going to use some highlighter. This is from RLG Cosmetics, which is a Nigerian brand. I really like the shade here. I've used this thing to death. So if I'm going to run out of any color first, it's going to be this one. So I'm going to apply some mascara on my bottom lashes. I'm going to line my lips with a lip pencil from Morphe. First color that I'll be using is from ABH and this one is in cool brown, okay? I'm going to be using another one called Blossom from them. This is like a very bright peach color. Um, on the center of my lips, I'm going to use Sunset Strip. This is a gloss by ABH. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to take one more question, then do my hair, and then just come and end this video, okay? Huh. Um, okay, so what's the last one? So this last one is, how do you handle those friends that are good to your face but not at your back? Cut them off. It's scissors. Cut it, okay? See, I feel like with me, the older I've gotten, the less time I have for things that don't make sense, okay? Basically, I'm just going to end this video by saying a couple of things. Pay attention to the people you call your friends. I'm not saying go police everything that they do. Call out toxic behavior if you notice it. If there is a very bad pattern when it comes to a relationship with somebody, you guys should talk about it. Stay away from people who make light of things that hurt you, make light of maybe relationships that are hurting you, make light of an illness that you have, make light of 
I don't know, things that are important to you, people who make fun of you, you don't want to be around those type of people. So there are so many things and I tried to personalize a lot of the things I said in this video. I did not want to generalize because in as much as I've said these things, there are very, very unique situations that still some of these things don't apply. I answered as many of the questions as I could and I hope that you guys enjoy this video and also enjoy the tutorial as well. I'm going to leave the list of everything that I have used in the description box. So please check there. Let me know what else you like me to do, like a topic you like me to talk on chit chat get ready with me this is so or this was so different from my other get ready with me is because of the way that i kind of did it as a q and a and i think that this was good because it helped me answer particular questions i hope you guys enjoy this i'll see you in my next one